Heather, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much to all who have subscribed to my channel and commented. I can't tell you how happy it makes me whenever I see a new subscriber or a comment. It just makes my day. So I just wanted to say thank you so much and I hope you're all doing well. I think that this will go up on the third day of Hanukkah. I hope you're enjoying the holiday if you celebrate. We celebrate both Christmas and Hanukkah in this house. In fact, we have actually adopted quite a few traditions. <laughs> this is like the house of holiday in this house. We of course do Christmas and we do Hanukkah, but we also adopted the Icelandic Yule Lad tradition. My son puts his shoe in the window every evening and in the morning there's a surprise in it. And then of course Beetlejuice, his elf from the North Pole, came down on the 1st of December. So he's been showing up in different places every day. So I hope you're doing well. We're doing well, but my niece unfortunately is not. I have a niece out in California and I'm so worried about her. She has come down with something that's called KLS. I think it stands for Klein uh, Levin syndrome and it's the most mysterious thing. It affects only one in a million people so there's not much research about it but it's had quite a devastating effect on her life as well as the lives of her younger sister and her parents. What the symptoms are is that she will sleep for 20 hours a day for sometimes two weeks at a time. And then when she does wake up, she has no idea who she is. She's in a sort of a fog and then she'll come out of it and she'll be fine and going back to school for like about, you know, two, three weeks and then she'll have another episode. And it's been just devastating to them. She was a very active teenager and now it's like her life has basically come on hold. Luckily, the school that she goes to is working with her so that she can still keep learning when she is awake. And my sister-in-law told me about this website so I could learn more about it. I looked it up and I discovered that the group that are trying to fund more research want people to print out their information, their brochure, and hand it to all the healthcare workers. So I thought I would just mention it on this channel because without research, there can be no cure. I'll put the link in the description box to the KLS website. But if you wouldn't mind um, going there and printing out some information about it and just handing it to your healthcare workers or anyone that you know who's in healthcare and spreading the news. If you are looking for somewhere that you can donate for charity this holiday season, do consider making them your charity this season. I'm just hoping that they can find some sort of treatment to help my niece, Caitlin, come out of this. That's the other thing. They don't know how long it will go on for. It could be 10 years, it could be 20 years, it could be two years. So I just wanted to see if I could um, reach out and spread the news via my channel because it is such a strange um, syndrome and so rare that just nobody knows about it. Today I want to share all my illustrated versions of Little Women with you. But before I get started, I just want to show you some things that I referred to in my last video real quick. And then I'll get to the Little Women. Let me have a sip of my coffee in my little mug that I bought in Concord. In my last video, I referred to how my son and I are reading through a very thick dinosaur book. And I just wanted to show you it. Dinosaur World and it is by Applesauce Press which is that publishing company in Maine that I spoke of in another video but it is a thick one and we are almost through. We're at the very end. I don't know if you can see just that little bit but it's a great book. It has all the dinosaurs in it and it's actually also illustrated in a, in a more scientific sort of way and um, you can use it to work those triceps you know if you've had too much buttered pasta, it's a good one to know about. If you have a kid who's in, into dinosaurs, oh, that was a heavy one. The other thing I wanted to show you was I spoke about the advent calendar and how I was interested in what was under the flaps. So what it is, is an illustration. Here is a cute one of a cat from uh, a couple of days ago. So yeah, they're very sweet. And there's another one. I cannot believe that I forgot to show this to you because I was so excited about these. When we were at the Barrow Bookstore in Concord, the used bookstore, I picked up a couple of cards by Chris Dunn 
And you might know his artwork because he illustrated a beautiful version of The Wind in the Willows last year. And I was so pleased to find this. I picked up another one, and I don't think this is from Wind in the Willows. It still has its plastic on. This is from, it's called Freddy's Patrol. It just makes me happy. I mean, look at that dog. <laughs> Today, I would like to show you my collection of illustrated little women. I have been collecting little women for a couple of years because I did an illustrator explore, and I actually had a ton and gave a few away to family and such for gifts but I still kept many of them that I just love so I wanted to show them to you. Little Women was written in two parts and part two is sometimes referred to as good wives especially in the UK. So part one ends when father comes home from the war and part two begins with Meg's wedding. If you've seen all the movies and you think oh I don't need to read Little Women I've seen all the movies I know what happens I would like to just tell you that there are so many sweet, quaint, beautiful little parts to the books that I never see in any of the movies and it's so worth reading. Um, I didn't read it until last year and I couldn't believe that I went my entire life without reading this book because it was just gorgeous. And I've got two adapted versions and then all of the others that I believe I have are all both parts together. There are so many beautiful illustrated versions of Little Women out there. If you want to see more than I have in this, do go check my website out. I'll leave the link below, waterbearreads.com, and I have uh, pictures and links and information. So the first one I want to show you is Sweet Cherry Classics, Easy Classics, illustrated by Roberta Bordeaux, and it's written by Lynn Wilson Bailey. and. I have to say, I was just completely charmed when I read this. This is my third Sweet Cherry classic that I've shown you. I have the Jane Eyre and their Mansfield Park, and I'm just always captivated by the way that they're adapted, and they're so cute and easy to carry around. Such a great little book, such a great little series. I also have this vintage edition by Golden Press from 1965, and on a previous video, I showed you Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm. Here, I'll show it to you, I've got it right here that I had found and said that I wanted to collect a lot of these. I just think they're really cool. David K. Stone was an artist from Oregon and I just love his work. Here I'll show you a couple of them. When Amy falls through the ice. And this is Amy when she's in Paris. This version is the full version so it's both parts but it's just condensed. It's vintage and it's just such a pretty version. I love the colors. Okay, so that's it for my adapted versions. Now for my full versions, which are both parts, all of them. I've shown this one to you before. I don't have the dust jacket, but it's uh, Tasha Tudor. And if you look closely, it actually has a bit of an embossed um, illustration on the front. I love Tasha Tudor. And I think I told you in the vlog that I did where I went to Rudyard Kipling's Vermont home that her place is about 20 minutes away from Rudyard Kipling's home in Vermont when I went they were closed and even I think when they're open they limit the amount of visitors but hopefully one day I can make it out there and show it to you. Here's one of her illustrations. She also has a really beautiful version of The Wind in the Willows, the Secret Garden, and The Little Princess. So there's Joe and Lori dancing. I really love this version. Every chapter has a, a chapter illustration and there's colored illustrations throughout and it's just such an, a great one to read. It's so pretty and yeah I just love Tasha Tudor's illustrations. They're so beautiful. If you're interested there's actually a documentary that you can look up. I think it's called Take Joy the Magical World of Tasha Tudor and uh, I'll try to find it and leave a link below if you're interested and also I'll leave a link to the Tasha Tudor website. Their family runs a website where they sell all things Tasha Tudor related so you might find something there that you might enjoy. So the next one I have to show you is illustrated by Louis Jambur. I think I'm saying his name right. He's a Hungarian American artist and his black and white illustrations are throughout as well as I think there's five color paintings in this version and it's the Illustrated Junior Library edition and I found this at my used bookstore up the road. The owner found it for me and kept it for me because he knew that I was looking for little women at the time. 
but there's an example of his black and white illustrations and I really like the black and white illustrations almost more than the colored ones. He's just one of those artists that does really well in black and white. There's a colored one for you. It's really beautiful too. Like the Tasha Tudor, there's at least a chapter heading illustration and an intricate one, which takes up a good portion of the page. Some of the chapters have the color illustrations in them, of course. This is just a great version to have. And I love this window scene. I don't know if you can see out, out my window right now, but it snowed a couple of days ago, like the first good snow that we've gotten this year. I'm hoping it sticks this time. We've had a couple of snowfalls, but they've all melted right afterwards. The next book was so hard to get a hold of, but I finally did. It's without dust jacket, and I know it looks a little beat up, but it's what it, what's inside that counts, and what's inside is artwork by Barbara Cooney. Uh, Barbara Cooney is well known in Maine and in New England in general and she's illustrated a ton of picture books which I'll pop up on the screen as I'm speaking but I was over the moon when I realized that she had illustrated Little Women. I couldn't believe it. I was delighted and I had to basically look and look and look over the last two years to try and find a version for sale and oddly they're not actually that expensive they're very rare but not expensive especially if you don't have the dust jacket and I just wanted to show you some of the interior there's the frontispiece for you and then oh, I'm going to show you a few of these because I don't know that you can really find them to see and here's when Meg is at the party one of the things that I also love about this book, it's not only that it's illustrated by Barbara Cooney, but that she tends to illustrate those things that you don't normally see illustrated. When Joe fries Meg's hair, <laughs> this little scene where Meg actually loses her temper and one of the few scenes in the book where she does where this cat jumps onto her back and it's just in that right place where she can't reach it. I'll have to read that part to you. Beth, if you don't keep those horrid cats down cellar, I'll have them drowned, exclaimed Meg angrily as she tried to get rid of the kitten, which had scrambled up her back and stuck like a bird just out of reach. <laughs> so that's what one of the things I really like about this version is that there's a lot of cute scenes throughout that are illustrated and I don't usually see those illustrations in other versions. So yeah, my Barbara Cooney edition, nice and beat up, no dust jacket but one of my most favorite books on the shelf. <laughs> I love it. The next version I want to show you was the version I ended up reading last year. My husband gave it to me for a gift and it's the Folio Society Little Women and I just love it so much. It's so pretty and the illustrator is Rebecca Green and you might know Rebecca Green's artwork. There's a book called How to Make Friends with a Ghost and I think The Unicorn in the Barn and there's a chapter book I've really been keen to read with my son. I'm waiting for him to age into it. And it's called Skylark's War. I love the, her artwork. Here's an example for you. And then here's Meg when she's doing the chapter titled Meg Goes to Vanity Fair. And then another one that I want to show you. Here's Beth. And I just think that they're so beautiful. And it's just such a well-made book. All Folio Society books are made. It was fantastic. So very proud to have this one. The next one I want to show you was this year's Christmas present to myself. And it is Little Women by Marjolaine Baston. I love these. I showed you my version of Emma in my Jane Austen July video. And I said in the video, and it stands true for Little Women as well, is I just love reading it this way because... I love how every time you turn the page there's another illustration from nature and it's just such a relaxing way to read. I really love it. So for example here is one of them and one of the things I found in this one that I'm not sure, I mean I may be wrong but I'm not sure if I saw it in Emma is this one actually includes some uh, animals in it like squirrels and some like rabbits in it which is so sweet. It has inserts as well just like Emma did where it's got you know like for example here is an, a recipe card for candied lemons and then you also have some history here's the um, a pamphlet about the American Civil War and inside there's also some information about Louisa May Alcott 
And what really made me happy is I found a card about the first edition of Little Women from 1869 and it looks like this and you turn it around and it has one of the original illustrations. The original illustrator of part one was Louisa May Alcott's younger sister May Alcott who you might think of as Amy as she's represented in the books. So she illustrated part one and then part two was illustrated by Hamat Billings who is an illustrator who also does a lot of sculptures and monuments around the USA. In fact I think if you've ever been to Plymouth, you will see the Monument to the Forefathers, which was designed by him, which is, if I'm not mistaken, the tallest granite structure in the U.S. The reason that May Alcott only illustrated the first one was because she, being a woman, just didn't have access to the masters. And when she illustrated the first one, it was just anatomically incorrect. I actually find them charming. And for modern artwork, where people very often use anatomically incorrect <laughs> illustrations. They're actually wonderful. You can kind of see how it's not exactly anatomically correct. And I guess these days it wouldn't matter. It would be just the style. But back then, you know, they wanted it to look perfect and have a unique likeness. And so, yeah, so there's so much to tell you about Mae Alcott. She was hurt by the fact that she wasn't chosen to be the illustrator for part two. But she didn't let it defeat her. She moved to Europe and got the proper training that she needed. And she went on to create some of the most beautiful artwork that was shown in the salon. And she really just made a, a bit of a name for herself. So I'll talk about her in another video. There's also the letters. This one is from Joe to Betsy. And I love that there's a letter from Joe to Betsy because I love Betsy. I think she's wonderful, but Let's see if I can read it. Her handwriting is really intense, but I, so Joe writes, I'm glad Lori seems so happy and busy that he has given up smoking and lets his hair grow. You see, Beth manages him better than I did. I am not jealous, dear. Do your best, only don't make a saint of him. I'm afraid I couldn't like him without a spice of human naughtiness. So anyway, that's just a cute letter from Joe to Betsy. And I don't know if you can see the handwriting, but it's, it's quite, uh, intense <laughs> so it was difficult to read that i hope i read it okay there's also a map of concord in there and i really love this version i'm reading little women right now for a book club which i told you about and i'm kind of toddling between this one and looking at the barbara cooney because i just recently got the barbara cooney version and i was so excited and i want to like read both so it's back and forth between the two but yeah I really love this one I think it's really beautiful the final book I want to show you is actually from Louisa May Alcott's home itself and it was a gift from my mother-in-law they allowed me to take photos of all my little women on Louisa May Alcott's desk which was just amazing and I had to do it with special permission you can't record inside Orchard House but they gave me special permission to do that and I was just over the moon and while I was busy photographing, my mother-in-law snuck a purchase in and she bought me this and then surprised me with it. And it's the Little Women Cookbook. And I've really loved it. I've made a couple of their recipes so far. One of them is these buckwheat pancakes, which are yummy. And then another one that was really yummy was the maple cornmeal drop biscuits. And this one is written by Winnie Moranville. It's more decorated than illustrated, I would say. And the decorator slash illustrator is Clarice Gifford. It's got this in papers. And of course, if you go to the Little Women and you purchase something there, you will get a book plate. And they have a picture of Orchard House, which you, if, you may have seen my previous video where I visited it. It was the first place we visited in Concord and I went to the bookshop. So do check that out that video if you haven't seen it yet. And then there's all these quotes throughout. I know by experience how much genuine happiness can be had in a plain little house where the daily bread is earned and some privations give sweetness to the few pleasures. And that's by Marmy. So those quotes are throughout the book. And then every section has illustrations like these. So this is the sweet treats, desserts and drinks section. And then it has all Amy, Beth, Joe and Meg at the top. So. Anyway, I love this and there's several recipes that I want to try out. They're recipes that the March girls would have made in their time and 
They're not too difficult. I think it's just a really beautiful addition. Well, that's it. That's it for my illustrated versions of Little Women. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed this video, please do subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know who you identify with. Are you a Meg, a Joe, an Amy, a Beth? At different stages of my life, I've identified with each one. I think right now I'm probably more of a Meg <laughs> at the moment. I think that's what's so special about Little Women is that you can sort of identify with all of them in a way. I'll be back soon with another video and until then, I hope you keep well, enjoy December, happy Hanukkah to those who are celebrating, and I'll see you next time. Bye!